Hi, it's Nell, and today I'm going to take a little break from doing plant care and plant pruning and all that plant stuff to talk about decorating a front porch and more specifically a very small front porch. Now, I don't have a small house, I just have a small front porch, so it does it does present some challenges, but it's also very fun and easy to do. So this is how it turned out here. Oops, the wreath, the pots. Yes, I do need to replace this. It's on the list of things to do. I just moved into this house about six months ago, so it's new. So anyway, I'm going to take you through the step-by-step -step on how this was done. Everything is artificial on this wreath because it would bake in the sun in the desert here. So um, this is going to last, of course, the whole season and for years to come. So I wanted to do some white pumpkins because my house sits very far back. It's at the end of a dead end street. The driveway is long. The walkway is long. So you can see these colors, they're a little bit brighter. And I did use these burgundy purplish leaves because the trim on my house is called wine stain or wine berry and it goes very well with that. It picks up that. So uh, that's what's going on here. And I love, I love eucalyptus. So I always have to use that in things. So this will last for, for a very, very long time. And I hung it with a keychain. So you can use twine, you can use yarn, you can use ribbon. I just thought this is kind of a fun, funky look. And my last door had it, the, um, the supports or these decorative things only came up to here so I could just slide the wreath over. But what I did with this wreath is I just did fishing line through the grates. So there's always a way to hang a wreath and if you can't figure out any way, you can just get one of those wreath hangers and put it right over your door. So now it's time to start on all of this. And this is a very small front porch, so I don't have a ton of room. So two pots is plenty. And this pot here is going to just be unadorned. I'm going to do other things around here. And... Fall in Tucson is very different than fall in other parts of the country. We're still very warm. We're in the 90s, so I couldn't even find mums or anything now. But you can use whatever you want to what colors go with what you have. So it's um, sort of your choice as to what you put in your pots. So a bit more about these plants. This is a cordyline. Uh, Calanchoes, they are, they are succulents. They do very well here in the part, in, in full shade actually. And this is an ornamental pepper plant, which I love the colors on this because you oftentimes find them in red, orange, you know, yellow. And this goes perfectly with the scheme here. And then this is a copper tone, you know, sedum, which I will plant in a planter at some point. But um, actually, I am probably going to move these planters to the back porch because that is, you know, sheltered. It's much more sheltered, shady back there after this is done. And I also have javelinas and ground squirrels and things that could eat these. But uh, we're just doing this to share with you what I would do if I was going to leave, you know, something on my front porch. Also, too, it is September 2nd or 3rd, so it's very early in the season, but just, <laughs> just wanted to get this out early enough to inspire you all. And then this is a large, this is a six inch, you know, a calanchoe, and you know, it's one of the calendivas. It's got the rosebud flower to it, just like the orange, or orange, orange calendiva over there. Here's a calanchoe. This is the Ipamoea. This one I think is black prayer, <laughs> prince, it'll vine, it gets really, big and long and crazy here. And then there's a, there's a tiny little, tiny little jade plant here, which I'll, 
I will replant after the, this is all done. So if those are the colors I chose. The white goes beautifully with the white pumpkins. So I have this little vignette done here. And when you decorate a front porch, a small front porch, you have to uh, leave space for if people to come in and out. I get, you know, packages delivered. So I didn't want to fill up this whole space here. So I just have the artificial pumpkins. These are just, you know, these are just, you know, little nosegays. Oops, oops, I'll show you, you know, I'm gonna show you this one. I have a bird feeder right over there. There's birds chirping away. So these are just, you know, little nosegays. You can place them in here and there and they just pick up the same colors off the wreath. I just cut the stems down and I, I, I wired them. And what is nice too is you can kind of fold them to get them to go the way that you want to. And they just, you know, pick up the color scheme of the wreath also. I did bird houses because I think bird houses go with anything spring, summer, fall, and I do have a lot of birds here. I live in a very vegetated area. And then I decided on the plain pine cones, you know, we decided that they look just look better than the painted ones, so I just did a few in there because I think that pine cones can be used for fall and for Christmas easily. And that is it. It's a very easy way to do it. These things can all be reused. The pine cones I've had, the pine cones I've probably had for 12 years, the bird houses I've had for a while, I use them in a lot of decorating. The pumpkins will keep the plants, eh, but you know, they're seasonal. <laughs> so anyway, I hope you have enjoyed this and have gotten a few ideas. So I hope you have found this to be helpful. There is a blog post to go along with this and the links to the materials used or similar ones will be there in case you want to recreate this look for yourself. And I hope you have a wonderful fall. And I just wanna say happy decorating. Bye.